The world is overflowing with things that can kill you. From poisonous plant life to deadly creatures and even water. In the wild, there are a million creative ways that you can die. But despite our lack of claws or tough hide, we humans have the benefit of pretty clever brains. But would yours be smart enough to solve these riddles and save your life? Who knows, you might even learn a thing or two along the way. Number 10. Big Trouble Picture yourself in the scorched plains of the African savanna. To your left, a dried out tree rises. To your right, the land drops into a steep valley. In the distance in front of you, lions roar and fight over the last bit of gazelle. But you've got more important issues on your mind. You see, you've just bumped into the back end of a 17-ton African bull elephant, and he isn't too pleased about it. Now he's stomping towards you. You'll need to think fast to escape. Do you A, run into the open plains ahead, B, climb the tree, or C, run down into the valley? I'd hurry if I were you. Did you choose to run into the plains ahead? Bad decision with those lions in there. Plus, elephants can really move once they build up momentum. Your chances would not look good. As for the tree, I wouldn't recommend making the climb. Elephants make quick work of trees and could not get straight down with a quick charge. Your best bet would be to head down the valley. Recent studies from Oxford University have shown that elephants will avoid hills where they can. They hate climbing, and what's more, a downhill jog may leave the elephant's flappy ears in front of its eyes. That's good news for you, as the humongous creature would be unlikely to pursue you further without being able to see. Number 9. Water, water everywhere. After your close encounter with the elephant, it's understandable that you'd like a glass of water to make up for the buckets of sweat you just lost sprinting away. But in the wild, drinking from the wrong water source can be a deadly mistake. Now you find yourself in a region which offers you four water sources, but which one should you drink from? A, salty seawater, but just a little bit. B, water from a clear, still lake. C, water from a silty stream. Or D, water from a juicy cactus. Now I certainly hope you didn't choose seawater. Not only will salt water dehydrate you further, it has also been known to cause insanity. And believe me, that's the last thing you need right now. Moving on, while clear water from a lake may seem like a sensible option, the stillness of the water could very well mean that the lake has become stagnant. Stagnant waters are a perfect home for the deadliest of parasites and bacteria. Avoid at all costs. A common misconception is that water harvested from cacti is a safe way to rehydrate. Not true. Cactus water is often tainted by the harmful chemicals found in a lot of cactus species. This can make you very ill and possibly even kill you. Your best bet would be to gather water from a river or stream, even if it's slightly dirty. While not guaranteed to be completely clean, moving water is a lot safer to consume than stagnant water. Number 8. Three Paths After a very, very long time lost in the wild, you're exhausted and you're only three hours away from starvation. You reach a split in the road. One path reveals a 15-mile path up a mountain that oversees a huge area of land on the other side, but is almost entirely barren with nothing but a couple of cactuses here and there. The second path leads to a beach, but it's not all sunshine and skinny dipping. The sea is constantly choppy and there are dangerous sharp rocks here and there. The third path leads into a heavenly seeming field containing a wicker box of 10 ripe strawberries and a single glass of water. Sounds delicious, right? Here's the catch. There's a flash flood on the way, meaning that whichever destination you choose, you're going to be stuck there for three weeks. So choose wisely. Now you may have thought it was a good idea to head towards the mountain and scout out the path on the other side of it. Who knows what could be there, right? Well, whatever is on the other side isn't going to mean too much to you. Even at a full sprint, you'd be unlikely to reach the top of the mountain before starvation delivers its final fatal blow. As for the strawberries and water, I'm sure they'd be incredible in the moment, but they certainly wouldn't last three weeks. 
the already ripe strawberries would be rotten within a few days, and one glass of water would not sustain you for almost a month. The beach is the wise choice. Even though the rocks are treacherous, the sea offers an essentially endless resource of food. With some smart resource gathering, you might even be able to turn some of that seawater into something drinkable. Number 7. Dirty Oasis Finding yourself in a desert, the heat and thirst is overwhelming. Your water bottle has been empty for hours. You notice a shimmering on the horizon. Another mirage, most likely. But as you get closer, you see it's a pool of ice cold water. But it's filthy, really filthy. Next to the pool, there lies a discarded backpack. You open it up. Inside are three items. But which one will be able to make this dirty, bacteria-infested water drinkable before you dry out like a raisin? A, a sheet of cloth and some elastic bands. B, a full salt shaker. Or C, a bottle of bleach. Well, firstly, throw that salt shaker away. Water is a dish best served plain. As for the cloth and rubber bands, while using these as a makeshift filter will certainly help to get rid of some of the bigger creatures in stones, it won't prevent the nastiest of the bacteria getting through. It may be surprising, but bleach is your best option here. This is because of a little known survival fact. Using two drops per liter of water, regular unscented bleach can be used as an emergency purifier. Simply give it a good shake and let it sit for a while. Just don't make it a regular thing. Number six, but a flesh wound. So while you're wandering along on your, quite frankly, horrible journey, another misfortune occurs. You fall over a pesky tree stump and break your ankle. It's bad. You need medical attention fast, or you guessed it, you're going to die. In order to reach civilization, you'll need to find your way there. Bearing in mind that you have absolutely no idea where you are in the world, which way will be most likely to get you to civilization? A, follow wildlife, B, follow the North Star, C, follow a river, or D, follow a passing aeroplane. Time's up. Let's think about this. Following wildlife may lead you to people, if you were in a national park, but you're not. Most likely, you'll just end up being attacked. Following the North Star might seem like something a scout leader would suggest, but seeing as you have no idea where you are, heading north could do as much harm as good. And every wasted second counts. A passing airplane might be heading to a nearby airport, yeah, or coming from one, but it could just as likely be heading for the ocean or deeper wilderness. You don't have time to find out. Your best bet is to find a river and follow along its banks. Civilization sprung up along riverbanks historically, so you're most likely to find a settlement this way. Number five, cold as ice. You are one unlucky individual. Now you've found yourself in the chilling clutches of a blizzard. Frozen to the bone, you'll need to do something fast before you freeze to death. You notice four items being slowly covered in snow that might help you to survive. Which one will save you? A, a plastic trash bag. B, a frayed rope. C, an old beanie hat, or D, a single rubber glove. A rubber glove might be useful to collect water, but that's the least of your concerns right now. An old beanie hat might give your head some warmth, but it'll get wet quickly. And what about the rest of your body? You'll freeze out in the snow. The frayed rope may help set a trap, but food is the least of your concerns right now. What you need is shelter, and trash bags are famously useful tools for this. In a flash, you can open the bag wide, spreading it between two trees, and you've got yourself a makeshift shelter from the elements. Or you could curl up and wrap it around you like a makeshift blizzard bag. It's waterproof, meaning you'll have a chance to dry off, and it'll even protect you from the cold wind. Trash bags are a must for any wannabe survivor. Number four, door to door. Finally, you make it to a settlement, a large tower built into a snowy hillside. When you step inside, you're faced with three doors, one of which you must enter. In the first is a man who has spent 60 years in prison, charged with violent murder. In the second door, there's a deadly giant hornet's nest with a population of six million extremely aggressive giant hornets. The third door is a walk-in oven with a current temperature of 500 degrees. 
there's no going back. Which door do you choose? Six million giant hornets is never going to end well, and these ones don't sound like the nicest bunch. As for the oven, it's sure to cure your frostbite, but it'll also leave you crispy on the outside and slightly overdone. The man behind the door, on the other hand, is your best choice. He was charged for violent murder, but did not necessarily commit the murder. For all you know, he could be very nice. As it happens, he is, and he lets you through very politely. Number three, psychopathic dinner date. Well, the murderer turned out to be quite friendly, if a little misunderstood. His brother, on the other hand, not so much. The owner of the tower, it turns out, is a crazed doctor named Billy the Butcher, who's just invited you into his chamber for dinner. Now, he lays three plates in front of you, each with a mushroom resting on top. On the first plate, there's a bright red mushroom, large and round, with flaky white spots. The second plate features an elegant, white, oyster-like mushroom, which is dripping with creamy liquid. The third mushroom is brown, dull, small, and spherical. He insists that you eat one, or he will feed you to his pets. Which do you eat? I hope you know better than to eat the first one. Nature is full of little warning signs, and usually bright colors are one of them. Though Super Mario may be able to scoff them down and grow larger, the only growing you'd be doing is growing very cold, very fast. These type of mushrooms, known as the Amanita muscaria, tend to be highly poisonous without preparation. As for the white mushroom, even worse. Many of the most lethal mushrooms are white in color, such as the Destroying Angel, Death Cap, and many of these and similar varieties secrete equally deadly liquids when cut or damaged. The safest bet would be to eat the brown mushroom, as it may belong to the Bolites or Agaric families, which are generally less toxic than the families to which the other two belong. Number two, Eeny Meeny. After your delicious meal, Billy the Butcher, in all his kindness, straps you to an electric chair. He rolls out a table with three buttons, green, yellow, and red. He explains that only one of the buttons will lightly shock you through the straps before unleashing you from the chair. The other two will administer a lethal electric shock to you. He then continues, the green button leads to electrocution, the yellow button will kill you, and the red electric shocks everyone. All of these statements are true. Which button do you press? Made your decision? If all the statements are true, then the yellow is out right away. We don't want to take that chance. This one is all about word choice. The word electrocute means to kill by an electric shock. Therefore, you'd want to press the red button to get a light shock before being released rather than a lethal one. Now you can run away from the maniac responsible for the twisted test. Number one, Battle Royale. Out you go limping into the sunlight, but you find yourself in a battle arena. Billy the Butcher sits up high laughing with delight. He shouts your final riddle from a megaphone. It's time to meet his pets. One has the head of a rattlesnake and the body of a giant ferret. One has a gorilla's body and the head of an alligator, and one has the face and body of a great white shark, but with legs, claws, and tail of a bear. You must fight one of these twisted creatures. Which will you choose? The first two would make very troublesome opponents in your weakened state. The snake ferret would be agile and extremely venomous, and the gorilla gator would crush you to a pulp. That leaves the shark bear as a simple choice. Billy has forgotten that sharks have gills and cannot breathe on land. No wonder he never made it as a veterinarian. Congratulations, you made it to the end of this rather stressful misadventure. Did you solve all of the riddles? Did you come up with your own solutions? More importantly, did you survive? Let me know how you did in the comments down below, and thanks for watching.